Hi, my name is Charles and welcome to part 14 of the Open ASCAD video series. In this part, we're going to talk about extrusion of 2D objects into 3D space and methods to do this, such as rotate extrude and linear extrude. So let's get started. So uh, we talked about in the previous video how you can have um, two dimensional shapes, such as a circle. Let's make a circle with a diameter of 10. So we have our circle. Now say we want a donut shape, or we want to turn whatever shape we've made in 2D into a ring. Well, then we use the rotate extrude command. But before we do this, it's important to note that the circle is on both sides of the y-axis. And for this to work, the circle can only be on one side of the x-axis, uh, probably the positive side of the x-axis is where you want it. So what we have to do is we have to move this circle over if we want um, if we want our rotate extrude to work. So we're going to translate it. And we'll say we will translate it five. And we press F5 to preview. And here we go, we get a sort of torus shape. Um, and so if we want it a little bit bigger, uh, we can increase the size to 10. So that makes it wider. Now that that doesn't increase the radius of, uh, of the smaller circle, uh, or the diameter, I should say. It just increases the, the point in the middle here to the center of the circle that we're rotating. So we can increase that again. And we get an even bigger torus ring. That's the idea. So what we can do now, if you notice that it's kind of choppy, it's not, um, it doesn't have a lot of parts. And so if you want to increase the number of parts in a rotate extrude, we just increase the FN value and we get a really fine torus. I can make it even finer. And that looks like a good ring. Um, now say you wanted to make a, a an actual ring. Um, we look at our circle and we can see that it's just a circle. And normally rings don't have that shape of just a torus. They're uh, slightly elongated. So we can scale our ring in the Y direction. So the Y direction, when you do a, a rotate extrude, however large it is in the Y direction, trans, uh, translates to the Z direction. So essentially, if you can imagine it, this circle gets flipped up along the Y, the X axis, it gets flipped and then rotated around the Z axis. And that's how the shape is generated. So uh, we will scale it in the Y direction. So let's say two times. Is that, no, that was the X direction. In the Y direction. That's probably closer to what we want. So now let's uncomment the rotate extrude. And maybe that's closer to a ring, the ring that we would want, or some other shape. That's, um, that's a method to get it. And that more or less covers rotate extrude. Um, you can do it with more complex objects. Let's comment this out again. Um, and we'll add another circle.
and it disappeared completely inside. So that's not what we want. Uh, oh, I didn't add the other variables. There we go. Uh, let's let me just decrease that a little bit. Okay, so now we have a slightly more complicated shape. Let's uncomment the rotate extrude. And so we get a more interesting shape now with um, another ring around it. So you can see uh, how the shape from 2D gets flipped or rotated around the X axis and then rotated around the Z axis to form the object. Yep, and that's, that is mostly it for rotate extrude. Now I've saved linear extrude for the second part because linear extrude is fairly complicated. It has a lot, not necessarily complicated, but it has a lot of parts to it. So I guess maybe that's what complex means. Anyways, I'm gonna move on to linear extrude. So say we have a shape, uh, a square. Actually, I'm going to use this. Okay, so we have a, a rectangle in the middle here that we call square, but it's a rectangle. And say we want to bring this into 3D. We use the linear extrude command. Now notice that between linear and extrude, there's an underscore. Same with rotate and extrude, there's an underscore. So there, in rotate extrude, there aren't any parameters that you necessarily have to fill in, but in linear extrude, um, the object doesn't make a lot of sense if you don't fill in the parameters. So it's important that you do. So we'll start with the height of an object. That seems like a good place to start. So if we have the height of an object, now notice that in a cylinder, you just define it as H, but in linear extrude, it has to be height. Um, it w doesn't interpret H, it's an interesting thing, but it has to be height. You have to spell out height. So we'll say the height is 50. And right now, this should be enough to generate an object. And this is this is similar to something that's generated with um, with cube. You could generate the same object with the cube method, but linear extrude gives you a few more options, which is why it's really useful. Um, so we can also say the center. Right now the center is false, so we're gonna make it true. And what that does is it just, it divides the height in two, and then it brings it halfway down. So that's what happens there. So we have a height that we can change, And we have a center that can either be false or true. Uh, next, let's move on to a scale. Let's scale it. That's probably an interesting thing to do. So I know it changes color but it's just a parameter that we want to change. So we don't put any uh, parentheses after it. We just say scale equals. And essentially what we can do here is we can scale the object um, on different sides. So at the beginning, it stays its current size. So at the bottom here, I'm pretty sure this is the bottom. This is the top. This is the bottom, it's gonna stay its current size at the bottom, and then it's going to gradually scale. It's going to linearly scale by the time it reaches the top. So let's say we wanna scale it three times. So we can see that the, the length is three times the length at the bottom, and the width is three times the width at the bottom. Uh, another thing that we can do for scale is we can define a two-dimensional vector uh, for which directions we want to scale in. So maybe we want to 
we don't want to scale the x direction, so we put 1. And maybe we want to scale the y direction, so we put 4. So as we can see, the x direction has not been scaled at all. It just goes straight up, and the y direction comes straight out. Uh, it comes out on an angle. And the top is four times wider than the bottom. So, and again, if we don't want to scale at all, we just set that to 1, 1. So probably my favorite uh, option of linear extrude is twist. So basically what this does is it will twist the shape as it goes up. And twist is defined in degrees. So say we want, by the time our shape gets to the top, we want it to rotate 180 degrees. So we want it to go just around once. So this part here will end up over here. So I should probably just show you. It makes more sense that way. So that's a really interesting shape. Um, and as you can see, it rotates it from the bottom up. It rotates it clockwise, which might be a little bit counterintuitive. But that's how it does. You can, if you prefer it the other way, you can change it to negative. And it goes the other way. So you can have a positive or negative twist. Um, and you can change this depending on how many times you want it to rotate. Say 360, that's a full rotation. You could say 720. That's uh, two full rotations. Uh, and you get some interesting shapes out of this. So uh, I'm going to leave this at 180. That's fairly simple. And if you notice, it seems a little choppy here, just like our rotate extrude did. But you don't use the fn value here. You use another variable, uh, and that's called slices. So you control the amount of slices that it takes. Uh, I'm not sure how many slices it's taking right now, but we're going to increase it. So we're going to say it takes 100 slices. Now let me format that this just a little bit better before I execute that. And F5, and that looks much finer. So if you're looking for a fairly accurate object, then increasing the number of slices is a good way to go. So now it's it's very fine. Just a uh, word of caution that increasing these numbers like slices and the FN value does increase your actual rendering time um, a lot. So sometimes it's hard to find a balance between rendering time and um, and the fineness of your object, but uh, is something that you probably have to find or else your model may never render. Depending on the specifications of your computer, um, a computer with a lot of RAM is a good a good method for creating open SCAD objects. I don't think GPUs help as of this point. Um, but that's that's it. That's more or less it for linear extrude. This these are the parameters. You have height, center, scale, twist, slices. I don't think I've missed anything, but if I did, you can always check the documentation, uh, and that will provide any answers that you may have. The Because the documentation is pretty comprehensive, and it's really good, which is how I was able to teach myself a lot of these things. Um, yeah. So I think... That's it. Maybe I'll do one more example just uh, to show off linear extrude a little bit. So I'm going to scale a circle. Ooh, I should increase the FN value. 
So we have our scale circle, which is an ellipse. And we are now going to linear extrude it. So let's give it a height of 100. Center will be true. I find that it's really easy to work with models. Um, we're going to leave the scale for one, but we might come back to that in a moment. Say the twist is 720 degrees and it has 200 slices. So this gives a uh, fairly interesting shape. Um, I will connect this to animation because that seems probably like a good way to show it off. So I'm going to reduce the quality just a little bit um, so that it doesn't look terrible. Um, still looks okay, but it'll be easier to render. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the twist value. I'm going to multiply the twist value by uh, let me just format it quickly. Change the twist value. I'm going to multiply it by the sine of 360 times the value of time. Uh, dollar sign T. And I'm going to animate this. And this should look pretty interesting. Maybe a little bit slower. But you can see what different uh, different twist values actually do to your object. So animation can often be a helpful tool if you are deciding between a few values. Um, we can increase this 1080. And perhaps we could um, we can do this again, but we can add a negative to it, so it'll go the other way. So these are uh, some interesting shapes that you can generate. It's a little bit of, uh, OpenSCAD generally probably isn't used for art, although it can be very artistic. And as you can see, some interesting mathematical shapes. Anyway, that's it for um, this tutorial. It's, um, that covers mostly, most of Rotate Extrude and Linear Extrude. Again, you might want to check the documentation. There might be some things I missed, but otherwise, uh, that's the general gist of how to use these commands. So thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.